you know, I'm only seeing you. Um, are there other people out there and they've just uh, closed off their video or? Oh, it might be the way that you're showing it, but it doesn't look like anyone else is sharing their video. Okay. All right. Well, um, I wanted to thank uh, you and Kelt uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, I attend uh, the the neighborhood United Church of Christ in Bath and and uh, live close to Bath, even though I'm a Brunswickite. So it's really nice to be here with you folks. Um, uh, and I especially appreciate the fact that you're you're on a Zoom tonight. I think many of us have gotten Zoomed out, and uh, I think that uh, putting yourself uh, out there for an hour when you you don't really know what the program is going to be like it can be a little dangerous so so thanks for that um i want to just before i start the slide presentation tell you a story about uh, my sister-in-law who lives in harpswell in january um she noticed that one of the heating zones in her home was not functioning and um she was concerned so she called the company that services her oil boiler oil burner and uh, they came out and um, told her that she needed a new circulating pump but when they went down to the basement they discovered water all over the floor and it was her hot water tank her hot water tank is um, is um, you know the water in the tank is heated by the oil boiler and it had failed or uh, not completely but uh, it seemed like it might fail completely and dump a whole lot more water on the floor and they told her it would be four thousand dollars for them to replace that um, hot water tank and and hook it up to the oil burner again. And when I learned this from her, I said, "Karen, let's let's slow down a little bit here and see what if there are some alternatives out there." And we went to Efficiency Main and and we checked. Actually, I did this. I I looked up uh, heat pump installers, heat pump hot water heaters installers in the in the Harpswell region area close by and found one that had installed a lot of heat pumps you can do that right on the efficiency main website and um, she decided to call them up and they came out and and uh, the net was that that uh, she could uh, install a, a heat pump hot water heater in her in her basement um, get it hooked up to the cir circuit breaker panel and um, uh, for for thirty seven hundred dollars, three hundred dollars less than it was going to cost to um, to do it with the boiler again, but that's still a lot of money. And um, I knew that her um, income wasn't great, so I suggested she call Efficiency Maine, and um, she found out that as a Maine Care uh, participant, um, that's one of the ways you can qualify for a free heat pump hot water heater. And that's where it got it got kind of complicated. She really liked the the uh, contractor that came out and wanted to do a bit of business with him, and he was ready to install something in the over the next couple of days. Uh, whereas she found out if you went with the uh, free heat pump hot water heater, they had a waiting list going into uh, stretching into well into February, and. Um, and you had to use the contractor that they provided, not the one that she liked. So in the end, she's, she spent that $3,700 and she was ahead of the game because now she had an appliance that was very energy efficient. Um, but it's just a little bit of a lesson that when, when you go into um, Efficiency Main, the website, which is wonderful and very comprehensive, there's a lot of small print and that's probably because the money came from the government, right? So um, I hope that uh, you guys, if you um, decide on a project you want to begin with, you'll you'll uh, be thorough, go in it with your eyes open. And, um, and that's the point of the story. So let's open the slides now. There we are. I hope you can all see that. So it's called Shrink Your Energy Bills. Uh, keep Maine's air and water cool and clean for our kids. Um, a primer on efficiency main rebates and the IRA tax credits. The, the abbreviation IRA stands for the Inflation Reduction Act uh, bill that Congress passed uh, about a year and a half ago, 
which was really, uh, to a large extent, a, a bill that would help uh, homeowners and, and businesses also um, become more energy efficient and to electrify um, their energy use. So uh, let's go right to the next slide. So here's a, a typical uh, main house, pretty modest, which is fine. Uh, and a map uh, of a, a little upside down L shape out in the Gulf of Maine, which um, by 2050 uh, should become operational. Uh, by 2050, we will be using uh, about three times as much electricity as we are now in the state. That's according to Richard Silkman, who uh, was the founder of a company called Competitive Energy Services. He's a PhD. Um, and um, so this location is, is about 45 miles off the coast of Portland. You won't see these turbines. Um, and there was just some exciting news uh, a couple of days ago, maybe it was yesterday, that uh, they now have identified uh, Sears Island up in Searsport to be the uh, port uh, where uh, these huge machines will be assembled and then uh, shipped out. Um, so uh, these turbines uh, could provide by 2050 uh, about 50% of all the electricity we use in Maine. So we're engaging here in a huge effort uh, to get ourselves off of fossil fuels and to um, uh, do what we can, do our share of what we need to do uh, on climate. Next slide. So uh, the Inflation Reduction Act is uh, full of uh, tax credits and uh, rebates that will help an, a homeowner uh, save money on their bills and also be kind to the climate. So here's a, a nice looking home with some solar on the roof and probably well insulated. And God knows uh, our houses don't always look as tidy as that one, but it's um, it's a nice picture. And I, I needed a good one for this one. So energy efficient electric appliances like heat pumps, Upgrades to your building envelope. When I say building envelope, I'm talking about the walls, the roof or the attic, the basement, places where you can reduce the intrusion of uh, cold air from the outside, eliminate the heat loss that is uh, costing you money. About 20% of the energy that Americans use on average, homeowners that is, is wasted. So. There's an opportunity out there uh, to save money become, by becoming uh, more energy efficient. So uh, new or used electric vehicles are, are covered with rebates and uh, solar systems as well. And so let's go on to the next slide. So there are two buckets of savings from the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, the tax credits from the IRS and the IRA rebates. And it's important to understand that all of the rebates now are being administered uh, by Efficiency Maine. And um, the money is flowing from the federal government to help Efficiency Maine do what they were already doing for a long time very well. Um, the tax credits, of course, you, you, you have to... Uh, fill out your taxes and apply the year following you make the improvement. And so that can create a challenge for people who don't have the upfront cash. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, but it's important to realize that these are the two buckets that you'll be dealing with. And uh, it might be obvious to you also that if, if, you get, if you're harvesting tax credits, that means you've got a tax liability. Um, some of these tax credits can be um, reharvested every year, um, and that's true of the solar um, uh, tax credit. Um, and so that's that's nice when they do that. When you can, uh, it's also true of the insulation tax credit. You can take up to a certain amount the first year, and then you can get 
that same amount in a future year. So sometimes it makes sense to space out what you do over a number of years. Okay, next slide. So I, I put this up, not for you to look at all those numbers, it's just an example from the Efficiency Main website of how many different programs there are. And this doesn't even show all the small print that's related to these programs. So what I decided to do for this presentation, instead of plastering all these numbers up for you, is divide the show into four distinct parts. Next slide. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, home improvements that you can make, including uh, heat pumps, uh, as well as uh, appliances. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, weatherization, the idea of getting your uh, building envelope tighter, and then solar. And of course, it doesn't have to necessarily be on your own roof. We'll talk about some of the other options pretty generally, and electric vehicles. We'll end with that. Next slide. So we'll start with home improvements. Next. So these include, and we're talking about tax credits now from the Internal Revenue Service, heat pumps, heat pump water heaters, energy audits, exterior doors, windows, air sealing, insulation, battery storage for your home, uh, 200 amp or larger breaker panels, and electric vehicle chargers. All these are, um, are uh, harvest tax credits. And sometimes, you know, the tax credit is a, a percentage of the total cost of the item up to a certain limit. So it's not like they're paying for all this stuff for you, but they're giving you a discount. Next slide. So there are also efficiency main rebates and you qualify for the largest ones if your household income is less than 80% of your area's median income. Uh, you can find that out with your zip code, I'm pretty sure, on, on the internet. So those folks get the biggest rebates and then between 80 and 150% of the area median income where you live uh, the rebates are a bit smaller. And then there's the rest of us who are well, more well off, better off, um, who can still get rebates and um, as well, but they're not as generous. I like this about the Inflation Reduction Act because I think historically people have seen this kind of work as something only the wealthy will do. But the bill really wanted to help uh, those of us who were not so well off. So the amount you'll get also can vary with your family size and where you live. Um, some efficiency main rebates apply to everyone, no matter what their income. So if there's one website for you to remember, and many of you I'm sure have probably already been there, it's the efficiency main website, which has changed a lot over the last couple of years because of the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, there's a search bar near the top. And if you uh, are having trouble finding what you're looking for, go there. And if that doesn't do the trick, uh, call their toll-free number. They're right here in Brunswick. Um, and they are open uh, weekdays during the daytime, Monday through Friday, but they're not open on weekends. You tell them what you're looking for and they connect you to somebody in that particular uh department and and they will give you much more specific information than I can provide here tonight in this short less than an hour presentation. Next slide. The second resource and the only uh, the only other resource I'm providing because I think these two together do a really good job is a nonprofit called uh, Rewiring America. They have a website. And if you go to that website on the home page, you see a link to uh, a calculator. And uh, you go to that calculator, open it up, and you put in your zip code, <clears throat> whether you're a homeowner or a renter, what your household income is, 
um, round numbers, I would think. And then how you file, do you file jointly with your spouse or you file singly? And then how many people live in your home? And then you click calculator, uh, calculate, excuse me. And up on the right side of this slide pops a list of the tax credits you're avail available, for, uh, you're, you're eligible for. Now, I don't think this is the best place to go for rebates because Efficiency Maine does all the rebate work from the IRA for the state of Maine. Uh, but this is a great place to find out about the tax credits. And there's a whole lot more on this website that you might be interested in exploring, which we don't have time to do tonight. So next slide. So let's talk about home appliances and getting rid of gas. This has become a bit of a political football, uh, but it's important to understand that when gas is burned, it releases carbon dioxide, the main driver of climate change. I'm, I'm not uh, talking about, I, I am talking about natural gas, but the word natural implies that there's something healthy and wonderful about natural gas. And in fact, uh, most of uh, natural gas is methane, which is one of the fastest causes of, um, of the global warming, the heating in the atmosphere that we're experiencing. Methane pollution from gas stoves is roughly equal to the impact of 500,000 non-electric cars on the climate. So you can see um, burning that stuff does have a pretty big impact. Next slide. So electric appliances don't burn gas, so they don't release carbon dioxide or methane. Uh, high efficiency appliances like induction ranges use less energy than conventional ranges. My wife and I bought a, an induction range during the COVID period. It was expensive uh, and you can spend huge amounts on them if you, if you have the money. Um, ours was a little over $2,000, whereas a similar range that wasn't an induction range would have cost in the low thousands, like 1,200. But it's been... Uh, a really good purchase. Uh, we love uh, how how quickly it responds and how sensitive it is to slight changes in temperature. Um, it's it's important to understand that the induction piece of this technology and a stove is only for the range top, not for the oven. The oven is a conventional oven. Next slide. Uh, when it's time to upgrade your appliances. Um, I'm here to advocate that you go electric um, and for a number of reasons, better indoor air quality, um, induction cooking is fast and precise. As I just said, heat pump water heaters cost much less to operate than conventional electric models and heat pumps for space heating can harvest energy savings, uh, even if you're still heating with oil, which most of us are about 60% of uh, homes in Maine are still heated by uh, oil. Next slide. Oh, and I, I should have mentioned in that last slide, jump in when the time is right. Um, as I said earlier, when I told my story, it's important. Uh, you know, we Mainers, we, we like to use things up before we, we buy something to replace them. Um, it's just a, a good, uh, habit to, to be conservative about what you get and, and saves you money over the long run. Uh, although if something's really energy efficient, you know, and you can, and you have the wherewithal to do it a little sooner, that might make sense. So here's a breaker panel in somebody's basement. You can get a 30% tax credit on the labor and the materials for upgrading it. And if you're, if you're going to electrify your home with more um, electric appliances, uh, which will save you money over the fossil fueled ones, um, you might have to do this. There is a $600 limit on what you can take the tax credit on. Next slide. So uh, let's take a little break from appliances and just look at what, uh, what is up there. For those of you who have not been to the Efficiency Main website, 
this is the picture to look like, uh, to look for, the, the lady happily knitting in a cozy living room. Um, and there's a whole bunch of information up here. Next slide. So this is their heating calculator, cost of heating calculator. Um, you can find this on your website uh, if you're diligent. It's a little hard to find. And each blue bar here is showing you the annual cost of heating in an average main home with these different sources of heat. And I've flagged with red arrows, the oil boiler in the middle, um, which on average will cost you, and this these figures come from January because they constantly update these figures every month, uh, 3,373 bucks. And uh, a heat pump, uh, a, a ductless heat pump, um, air source heat pump uh, mounted on the inside and outside of your home is the second bar over there at 1698. Now this is not really a fair apples to apples comparison because the oil boiler is probably sending either hot air or hot water to radiators all around your home. The heat, the ductless heat pump, notice that it's ductless. That means that the outside unit is just on the outside wall uh, where the inside head is mounted, either like a radiator on the floor or more likely um, on the wall. Um, and so if you have an open floor plan, you can get away with one of those. We've, we've done that uh, at my church in Bath, the neighborhood. We have one large size ductless heat pump. The kitchen we don't worry about because when you're in the kitchen, you're busy, you're on, on your feet, and you're working. And the bathrooms, well, it can be a little chilly in there. Um, so, um, what do I, oh, the other thing I wanted to say about this is that you can change the numbers in each bar. If you have, if you know what your particular costs are and they're very different from the ones on this chart, you can change them. And I haven't shown you the whole page. There's more underneath where you can, you can uh, play around with the numbers and get a good sense about uh, what might make the most sense for you, given what your options are. Next slide. So here's Andy uh, Meyer, Senior Program Manager, talking about heat pumps. You've probably seen him on television. He's a really nice guy. Um, and he explains how they work. They don't um, heat air, they just move it from one place to another. And that's what makes them so energy efficient. And when you run them backwards, instead of heating, you're cooling your home. Uh, so they have that feature too. When it's cold out, it moves heat from outdoors to the inside. And that always seems counterintuitive, but there is heat out in there in that cold air and they bring it inside. And when it's hot out, it moves heat from indoors to the outside. And efficient heating in cold climates, even it provides efficient heating in cold climates, even at an outdoor temperature as low as minus 15 degrees. There are different kinds of heat pumps you can get. Some will go even, uh, will provide more heat even at lower temperatures, um, but they have a defrost feature which makes them a little bit less energy efficient. And the technology that's going into heat pumps is constantly being upgraded. There are new, smaller ones. New York City is installing very small heat pumps that hang on a window. Um, so things are constantly changing these days. Next slide. This, uh, you're looking at a heat pump hot water heater, which is basically uh, a hot water tank. Uh, with a heat pump mounted on the top of it. So there are some height requirements that are uh, good to know about before you buy one of these. And there are also cubic, cubic footage of the area in which they're mounted um, requirements. Uh, for efficient operation, you have to have a good, good source of uh, fresh air coming to them. Um, ours is in, in the basement at... Uh, my church, the neighborhood in Bath, we put one of these in a in a bathroom where we had a fan that would come on if the door was closed. And uh, Fred Horsch of um, Spark uh, Applied Efficiency, a, a business in, in Brunswick, said that would be fine. So 
Um, let's look at the rebate picture here on the left side of the slide, uh, the whole home heat pump. Um, you can get incentives up to $10,600. Now, the great majority of us aren't going to get that many. Um, if you do a, a, a whole house system, this is new now, they will rebate up to $8,000. Now, it's important to understand that a whole house system is, is ducted. You're going to move the warm air to different parts of the home, and that makes it a little bit less efficient. But uh, Efficiency Maine is trying to move beyond just having the many split ductless heat pumps of eligible for rebates. On those, you can get up to $4,000 um, depending on your income level. It's lower for the wealthier among us. And then there's a middle uh, group um, as well. And the, then you can harvest the tax credits too if you have a tax liability. Uh, for these. Now on the right side of the slide, um, <clears throat> Lowe's and Home Depot have installed, a, have sold a huge number of these heat pumps. And at Lowe's currently, they've, they've increased the size of the rebate from $950 to $1,050. And it's sort of cool how it works. Uh, there's a QR code somewhere in the store near these units. And you take your camera, your your smartphone, and uh, focus on the QR code, and it'll up pops on your screen. You don't take the picture; up pops uh, a website, and you click on it with your finger, and it takes you to the form you fill out. And you fill it out right in the store if you're gonna if you're gonna buy this thing, and uh, the money is taken off uh, the cost of the item, so you don't have to wait to get a check from Efficiency Main a month or two later. Um, okay, next slide. I have to keep moving. There's a lot to cover. Uh, so this is a, another uh, Efficiency Main webpage where you can search for a contractor. It's important to understand for those of you who are new to this, that Efficiency Main doesn't do any of, of the work in your home. Contractors do. And they have to be um, approved contractors that work uh, with Efficiency Maine uh, to make these um, rebates uh, possible. And you can set, select by how far from your home, um, how many rebates uh, they have provided homeowners. So you can get a sense of somebody's more experienced at doing one of these things. And then the services, of course, it's much more than heat pumps. It's it's all the various other things that that um, efficiency main rebates for. Um, and I discovered something today. I was looking at the distance column where it says select, and if you put in fifty miles, I, I had heat pumps up for for a search. If you put in fifty miles, I only got about four heat pump installers. If I put twenty five miles or ten miles, I got far more. So it's sort of loaded. The more local you go, the more uh, uh, contractors you see, which is kind of counterintuitive. So I wouldn't go looking for a contractor who's 50 miles away anyway, probably, but it's good to know. Next question. I mean, next <laughs> slide. So let's move on to weatherization. This is here we're talking about um, reducing the heat loss from your home through the walls, the windows, the doors, the attic, the basement. Next slide. Uh, we'll talk about the energy that we don't use. And Andy Meyer loves to call these megawatts. They're the wattage that you don't use. They're the money that you end up saving uh, because you're not using the electricity. So how do they help the climate? Well. Most of us, many of us at least, are still using oil or gas or propane. And we can at least use less if our homes are tight. It's a great place to start, in my opinion. Some people say that you should always start with an energy audit. Andy Meyer disagrees. He thinks you should do what is most important to you, whatever it is. Um, but uh, reducing the amount of energy you're using, for instance, can make sense to do uh, with insulation and air sealing 
uh, before you size a heat pump uh, because you might not need uh, the larger, more expensive size if you've already made sure that your home is tight. And cleaning up the grid will also be easier the less energy we need. So a man is trying to get uh, the grid cleaned up. In other words, I think that's a euphemism for getting off of, of fossil fuels. But um, solar and uh, hydro, um, I'm getting tangled up here in my language, but I think that it, our grid is, I just wanted to say that the main grid is pretty clean already. Uh, there's, uh, I think, no coal being burned for Maine or very little in our energy supply. Um, and then our, our the main fossil fuel used to generate electricity is is natural gas, which of course is, is cleaner than than oil, but it's still a, a uh, pollutant because of its methane content. Um, and of course, the other thing I wanted to say from this picture is it it looks pretty chilly in this picture. And a lot of people have this notion that that if you um, want to be energy efficient, you just turn down your thermostat. And that is not what I'm peddling tonight. Really, you you uh, you can be mar far more comfortable in a home that's well insulated and the the holes, the tiny holes and cracks that air gets in um, uh, are are having your money go out the window. Next slide. So uh, the picture on the right is just showing you where all the cold air uh, can get in and the orange arrows where it tends to get out. Of course, uh, the warm air rises. And so the tendency uh, of, of what air does in your home is to go up. Um, that's called the stack effect. And if you have a uh, an energy auditor come to your home, they're going to take a good look at um, what is causing that. Often it can be the basement windows uh, where there's a lot of leakage because those tend never to be replaced. Sometimes they're really old and leaky. Um, and uh, there used to be a program that Efficiency Maine had that, that provided um, a contractor with a couple of helpers who would come to your home and they would set up a blower door test, which blows air out of your home. And then, of course, doing that sucks air in through the leaks. Um, and while one person is monitoring what's happening at the blower door, uh, the other folks are running around the house looking for places where the air is getting in, either with an infrared camera or a smoke, a candle that makes smoke so they can see. And they have... Uh, a caulking gun in their other hand, and they're sealing up these uh, leaks um, as the blower door test is taken, is, is um, in operation. So um, that program is no longer offered. It used to be a quick and dirty way of getting, uh, you know, getting the uh, getting a start on things if you were brand new to making your house tighter. I checked with Efficiency Main today, uh, and they don't have that program anymore. They just uh, have the in the insulation rebates. But if you go for a contractor to provide insulation, it is required that they have a before and after blower door test so they can quantify how much uh, they you've reduced the air leakage. Um, so, and, and, and those people are the ones who also will do their best to air seal your home. The best time to do it is before, is when you're building the house. Uh, but most of us are, are not in that kind of a situation these days. We have to do the best we can uh, to do the air sealing when we can't be wandering around an attic that's already filled with uh, insulation and, and so forth. Um, next slide. This is a picture of loose fill, probably cellulose in somebody's attic, uh, a nice warm blanket of about uh, 12 or 14 inches. I think it's 14 inches, gets you up to R60. This is the main place the heat is trying to get out of your home. Uh, at the neighborhood church, we discovered uh, there was no insulation in the attic of what was once the Admiral Steakhouse. Um, and so that was a do-it-yourself project for us where we 
we rented a uh, a, a blower and uh, brought home a, a whole bunch of bags from, I guess it was Home Depot. And for about $1,700, uh, we insulated the roof and it made a huge difference uh, to our, our sense of comfort down below. Um, there are other 30% of up to $1,200 each year you can take uh, ta a tax credit on and doors, uh, $250 per door up to 500 windows, um, but everything is capped at $1,200, but these generous tax credits reset every year. So you can do more uh, year after year until you've got your whole house done. Next slide. Um, okay, I got to keep moving here. Uh, <laughs> these two slides do not qualify for tax credits or rebates, but I couldn't resist putting them in. I've been a volunteer with uh, Window Dressers, the insulating window insert nonprofit for over 10 years now. And um, uh, there is a community build of these inserts in Bath, and there's one that I help lead in Brunswick. And um, basically you more than double the insulating value uh, of the existing window um, because you have two dead air species. So let's go to the next slide and uh, just show you what a, what these inserts look like. They're, they're uh, natural pine one by two frames screwed and glued together in the corner. And they're custom measured for each window by volunteers who come to your home and then uh, the uh, frames are cut and all the materials are shipped to your town uh, where Paul Perkins and his friends uh, put together these inserts um, over the course of about five days. And uh, in five days, if you have a good crew, you can build up to 300, um, 250, 300 of these things. Um, and you can store them in the in the summer, take them out. They're long lasting. They'll last for about 10 years. And then you can bring them back and we'll rewrap them for you for $15 an insert. They're reasonably good looking. You get them painted white if, you, if it's important to you, they cost more. Um, and so our nonprofit uh, has now th at the end of this season built 68 over the years we've operated 68,000 of these inserts uh, for homes across uh, Vermont and Maine and a little bit of New Hampshire. And um, if you are a person who's struggling to make ends meet, we don't have any paperwork you have to fill out. We raise money from donations and provide up to 10 inserts uh, free of charge per year. If you need more, you can come back the next year. And um, what was I going to say? You know, I'm 83. <laughs> it comes and goes really fast. So let's just go on to the next slide. <clears throat> okay, we're going to talk very briefly about solar systems. Solar is clean. There's no carbon or methane pollution. It's locally produced right here in Maine on your roof or at a community solar farm. With net metering, a solar owner is credited for the excess power generated that goes out to the grid. Uh, this slide is not about people who are living off the grid. Um, and, and that legislation will probably change over time. It may become a, a little bit less favorable. But right now, um, if you uh, have solar on your roof or you belong to a have a, an ownership share of a community solar farm, um, your and you build you build or buy enough panels to cover almost all of your usage. You don't want to get more. That's why I say almost because if you got more, you wouldn't get compensated for the extra. Um, but your your bills could be under twenty dollars a month all year round. Um, one thing to think about is if you might be buying a, an electric vehicle in the future, you might want to oversize. The, uh, the the panels. Uh, we we didn't do that and now we have a Chevrolet bolt and uh, our bills have, have gone up. So something to think about. 
Next slide. Um, so this tax credit will be available to 2033, um, and you can deduct 30% of the cost. And uh, the tax credit can be carried over from one year to the next. Um, so it's a big project and it's an expensive one. Um, but if you're planning to stay in your home for a while, uh, it can really save you money over the long term. Next slide. This is a guy who's installing an inverter. Solar panels make DC electricity and your house uses AC electricity. So you have to change the, uh, the, the uh, direct to alternating current. Um, a few things you need to be careful about. You need to make sure you have uh, the right to install on your roof. There might be zoning restrictions in Bath, uh, when we applied for the uh, solar install on our roof, um, we discovered to our uh, dismay that uh, we were in a historic district right there at the corner of Washington and Center, and uh, solar panels that were visible from the for, from the street in a historic district were not um, allowed. So what did we have to do? We had to go to the planning board and they told us to rewrite that portion of the land use code for them and they would consider it. And we did that twice and they weren't too pleased with what we came up with. And eventually they took on the task of, of drafting the ordinance, uh, a revised ordinance that allows under certain conditions, uh, solar panels visible from the street in the Bath Historic District. So our project took, um, we started raising money long before we were ready to get these up, but they went up in 2021. And since then, our, our bills have been very low. Next slide. Um, solar panels will uh, pay for themselves in, in Maine in roughly nine to 12 years. Um, but they'll function for 25 or 30 years or even longer um, with a speed at which technology is changing. Sometimes it's you, you have to wonder whether do I jump now or do I wait for something even, even glitzier that's going to come along that will do a better job for me in a few years. So that's, that's a hard decision and it's worth thinking about. Next slide. Uh, here we are celebrating our panels on our south facing roof. Now we have torn out our asphalt and we're going to do a native garden around the church. So we're very excited about that. Um, financing options. Since this, this particular uh, array costs $23,000. And after we had gotten to about the $7,000 mark over several years of fundraising with uh, bake sales and uh, auctions and that kind of thing, we realized it was going to take forever. So we, um, we uh, found four lenders. Three of them were in our congregation, and one of them was my nephew. <laughs> and they lent us the money to put these up. And we had an agreement we would pay them back in over five years at 3% interest, one annual payment each year. And now we only have two years left uh, on the payments and we'll own the solar system free and clear. But you as a homeowner, if that's what you are, uh, should certainly consider something like a home equity line of credit or some other kind of loan. Efficiency Main Lake makes loans, I think, at about 5%. Um, so the equity line of credit might be better, but um, it's something to move on because you're saving so much money um, that helps to pay for the cost and makes it significantly more affordable if you do it sooner rather than later. At least that was our rationale. Next slide. So we're here to the last section, electric vehicles. Um, which are also a bone of contention these days, but I'm gonna uh, advocate for them. I own a Chevrolet Bolt. Um, EVs cost less than a gas vehicle to operate, less about less than half. There's reduced maintenance, fewer moving parts, no oil changes. 
uh, yes, I do read about uh, Tesla's having to be recalled and that kind of thing, uh, but my bolt has been perfect. Uh, absolutely no problems. Just rotate the tires every 5,000 miles. And there's another uh, old wives tale out there about tire dust, which I think is unwarranted, but we don't have time to talk about tire dust tonight. Um, we charge ours overnight at home in the garage. The, uh, the circuitry for that was installed free of charge and paid for by General Motors. I don't know if they're still doing that. Unfortunately, they don't make the bolt anymore. It was one of the cheapest electric vehicles out there, but they're gonna introduce a new one, uh, a new version of it in 2025. I'm frankly dismayed by the number of expensive electric vehicles. Um, I, I think it gives them a bad reputation and I wouldn't buy one of them. They're too expensive. Uh, if you feel the same way, uh, buy yourself a Leaf, a Nissan Leaf with slightly older technology and shorter range or, uh, or wait for the next bolt or something equivalent to come out. Um, we charge it overnight at home. At winter time, we get much less mileage. This morning, it was 156 miles of range we had, but the average American uh, only drives uh, 30 or 40 miles a day. So uh, most of us can do quite nicely with the Bolt if we're careful. I wouldn't, I, if I only owned one car, I wouldn't own an electric vehicle yet. Maybe in three or four years, I would because better battery technology is, is really coming along very fast. Uh, but um, we have a second car for those trips to see our family in Connecticut. And so it works for us. We drive the Bolt uh, most of the time. My wife can hardly give up the keys to me, she likes it so much and she was the one who didn't want it. <laughs> anyway, they're fun to drive. Um, they're cleaner, fewer emissions, and it's a good feeling to drive by the mobile station and not have to stop for gas. Next slide. That's not my car, but it's the slightly smaller version of the same car. There were two, two models that were available. So 54% of our carbon pollution in Maine comes from transportation five tons of carbon dioxide is emitted from a gas vehicle, more than four times the amount emitted from an electric vehicle charged from the New England grid. And if you, if you have solar, um, you're not emitting anything. Of course, there are emissions from uh, building the car as there are with all cars. And um, there's a huge health benefit if we electrify our transportation system. Um, you can see the statistics down at the bottom, uh, which I won't read now, but they're significant. Um, and that bolt in the picture uh, before they stopped making them a few months ago um, would, with the uh, $7,500 tax credit was under $20,000 brand new with a good safety system in, in them. So um, there are less expensive options and there will be many more in the coming years. Next slide. Um, this is about range. I'm gonna skip that because we've gone too long. And then it shows the three ways that you can charge a, uh, a car. And uh, we've just gotten another big $15 million grant to install more charging stations in Maine. So the situation is gonna get better. Next slide. Um, Efficiency Maine, once again, is the great, the great spot to go to uh, learn uh, all there is to know about buying an electric vehicle in Maine. And you have to be really careful uh, because if the, the there are still manufacturing uh, requirements, and if you don't check the VIN number of the car, the specific car you're looking at, and make sure that it was manufactured in North America, you may have um, you may not harvest the tax credit. Uh, so go to Efficiency Maine if you're interested in an electric vehicle. Next slide. Um, $7,500 rebate on new, 4,000 on used vehicles. There are restrictions, as I said. Um, and now the dealership is uh, taking the tax credit 
and then reducing the cost of the car. So you can take out a smaller zone, a, a smaller loan when you purchase the car and save interest on the purchase of the car. And uh, there's a tax credit for installing a charger system at home if you don't get it free like we did from GM. Next slide. So they're going to be rebating electric bikes, but they're gonna be primarily for low income people. And I live very close to State Road and I see a lot of people walking to work. And I hope that these uh, this benefit will be designed for people with low income so they can afford uh, a more reasonable way to get work in this get to work in this cold weather. Next slide. So a lot of opportunities for you to think about. Um, uh, let's electrify everything we can and be good good uh, residents on Mother Earth and let's tighten up our homes and enjoy more comfort. Let's look at solar options and see if we can make something good happen. Uh, for ourselves and for our communities, and and even look at electric vehicles if you uh, if you haven't yet, it's pretty exciting. Um, and just think in steps. Don't try to do it all at once. Do a little at a time. The church started in 2017, and we're still at it. So it, you don't get it all done in one year unless you're a millionaire. Next slide. So where to start? I would say pick something that you know you really need to do. And remember uh, to be aware about uh, moisture in homes. If you have a moisture problem, be sure that you check with an energy auditor or an expert and remediate that before you make your house tighter. And then make a plan and, and take your time and go one step at a time. Next slide. So these are the two websites uh, I told you about Efficiency Maine and Rewiring America. That's all you really need to get started. Next slide. Uh, so thank you very much for listening to this yak of mine. I hope you got something out of it. Um, come by one of our Midcoast South chapter meetings. We meet every month here on Zoom. Uh, so it's easy to come from your home. Um, and we're not live, so I can't invite you to stop by our table, but um, check us out on the web. And uh, thank you again. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, do you want me to stop the screen share and then we can switch over to questions? Let me do sure. That. All right. Um, so, we have I'm just uh, all right. So we have some questions that people have already submitted, and we'll start with those. Um, if you have a question, feel free to stick it in the chat, and, and we'll ask it um, as they come in. So let's see. Our, we had a number of questions that came in earlier about heating. Um, one was asking if there's an annual limit to the tax benefit from heat pumps, and if that's one of those things that could be installed over a couple of years. Could you repeat that? I didn't get all of it. Oh, yeah. Is there an annual limit to the tax benefit for installing a heat pump system? And is that one that you could install over several years to yeah, maximize yes. that tax in um, benefit? I don't believe it is, um, but Rewiring America would know the answer. Um, you'd probably have to take the tax credit in one year. Efficiency Maine would know for sure as well. I'm sorry, I'm not positive about that one. Thank you. Um, so there was a question of, from someone saying, they live in a house built over 200 years ago that's pretty drafty. Um, will heat pumps alone keep it warm or would they need an oil furnace to supplement? Yeah, well, first of all, um, I would I would avoid the oil burning the oil if you can if you can and uh, if um, if you haven't had a, a contractor or or looked yourself at uh, where cold air is getting into your home and warm air is getting out uh, it makes more sense in my mind to do uh, the the um, building envelope measures first 
and that will increase the likelihood that the heat pump will do fine. Remember that there are different sizes of heat pumps. Um, some are more capable than, than others. So um, <clears throat> let's see, is there anything else I wanna say about that? Um, of course, it's dependent on cost two um, the, and, and your income level, um, how much you can harvest in terms of reduction in cost. Um, but I'm not aware of, of a rebate that extends over several years. We had um, a question about heating systems. Um, and I'm not sure if you'll know this, but um, they were wondering about whether there are heat pump heating systems that are in available now or in the works um, that could be used to replace a uh, oil powered hot air furnace. So a, a right. ducted oil furnace. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way I interpreted that question. It's a, uh... It and and the answer is yes. It would be more expensive, uh, but um, I believe that you can use the existing ducts uh, for uh, hot air that's distributed to different rooms, uh, but just change the source of how the heat is generated to a heat pump. Um, but uh, there's something to be said for just doing several mini split ductless heat pumps. They're more efficient. Uh, they're probably far easier to install. And our house, um, we we have one heat pump on the second floor and one on the first in a fairly open uh, home uh, space-wise. And we get along just fine with those two, two heat pumps. We have a an oil burner in the basement and we don't use it unless um, we're, we've been away on a trip and it's been very cold out and we wanna give the, the uh, house a shot of, of uh, warm air, warm warmth before uh, we turn on the heat pumps. Um, heat, heat pumps like, they don't like to have their temperature changed a lot. We used to change, you know, turn our temperature down from 65 to 55 at night and put on the all the blankets. Uh, but heat pumps prefer to be operated at a fairly consistent uh, temperature level. We had a question come in about the um, hot water heat pump that your sister had installed. The question was whether it's um, just for domestic hot water or if that's also used for central heating radiant heat hot water. Yeah, I think that's an area of uh, research now. And maybe there are some folks uh, who are doing that using a heat pump to heat water for uh, for a radiant floor or something like that. But no, I think uh, the current technology doesn't go in that direction. It's just uh, for heating domestic hot water, which you run out of your taps. Um, so that kind of ties into another question that came in from someone who was asking about an air to water heat pump um, from someone who's interested in using a heating system uh, or who has a heating system that uses hot water. Um, they found an equipment supplier, but have had a hard time finding an installer. And so are you, have you heard of systems or installers that, um, or recommendations for assistance for finding that type of installer? Yeah, I think it's, it's all, it's all so new that, uh, you know, people are looking to make a living doing this work and, uh, until it's a little further along, it's probably going to be hard to find people. I'm sorry that I can't suggest anybody, uh, I would start Googling away and see what you can find. I know we, um, at one of the blast Bath Climate Action Commission talks, um, there was someone there who um, installed heat pumps and, and he mentioned that there are some systems in Europe um, that are do this well, but they're, um, not necessarily being sold here. And so it sounded like the challenge was that the um, they were having a hard time getting a supply of it here because there weren't enough coming in. And so there were a few installers able to install them. So it sounds like the systems are available. They're sort of out there, but um, there are a limited number of homes in the US that actually use forced hot water for their heat or that use hot water for their heat. And so yeah it was um there weren't it, the systems yeah, it, weren't it, making it over here cost effectively 
Um, but we did a, just, I'm just going to read a comment out of the chat. Someone wrote um, that one source for a, a heat pump for heating hot water is Arctic heat pumps. So just uh, as a note from one of the comments that came in. Yeah, Sam. What kind of a heat pump? Uh, Arctic heat pumps. Okay. It's a brand name? Um, I haven't heard of it, but. Uh, I don't know. You know, um, call call a uh, heat pump installer. Um, yeah. Somebody who does a lot of these, and and perhaps they'll know more. Um, I think oh. we're going to see so much change in the coming years. Great. So the comment just came back and said that that's a heat pump installer from Canada. Um, oh, okay. That supplies to the U.S. Um, so we had another question that was asking about um, the efficiency main rebate system, and I think you touched on this order earlier, but. Um, it'd be helpful to have a little more clarity. So does um, the efficiency main rebate system, do you need to completely remove your existing system or can to qualify for a rebate um, if you are getting heat pumps or can you keep that system as a backup and still qualify for rebates? Yeah, what I've seen on their website recently is uh, wording that you agree uh, to use you know, the heat pump or whatever it might be as your primary source. Uh, I don't think there's any, I'm not aware of any requirement to remove old technology or fossil fuel technology. And uh, I think that's a good thing. I mean, this is a transition that has to happen over 30 years. And I, I certainly uh, agree that we're not making the transition fast enough, but um, you know, this is, we're living in a real world where people can't just spend endless amounts of money to to do something new. So you do the best you can. Um, a question came in about geothermal heat pumps. If there are rebates for them, and if anyone is installing them in Maine. Oh yeah, um, on Peace Island, uh, there is uh, one particular house that did it. It's very expensive compared to an air source heat pump. And it's more efficient once it's in place. Uh, you can also go to ask this old house, you know that, look, look at some of their old uh, um, YouTube videos uh, and, and, and learn about a lot of this technology. You can learn about induction stoves and, and uh, ground source heat pumps. Um, they do a good job of explaining, but you have to spend more money. Let's see, there was a question that had come in the other day about um, whether there are window treatments other than um, inserts or window quilts or any other type of window treatment that you'd recommend. Yeah. All I know is uh, that the commercial uh, companies that provide inserts are three times the cost of the window dressers inserts. And they're often only one layer and they're often in an aluminum frame, which is not energy efficient. Um, I questioned that person's um, accuracy when they said there was not enough fire value from an, a window justice insert. The, the, the feedback we get from homeowners is that they do a terrific job. And I can say from my own experience with them that on really cold days when you're liable to have water dribbling down the inside because of the condensation from the cold surface. Um, I never see those that I never see that phenomenon with our with our window inserts. So I'm a real advocate. Um, I'm not seeing any new questions. Becky, is there anything I'm missing? I don't know. Um, I don't see any new questions. Um, I did just drop into the uh, chat feature. Um, I found the geothermal reference on Ask This Old House, um, just in case anybody's curious to check it out. Oh, thank you so much. They talk about heat pumps too. Well, excellent. All right. Thank you so much to everyone who came tonight. And thank you so much, Sam, for... Um, 
sharing all of this information and taking the time to um, to speak with everybody tonight. We'll send out an email um, sometime within the next week uh, sharing those web resources that you listed um, and a link to the recording if anyone's interested in that. Um, and I